GitHub Copilot is getting new features basically every month, and since a few days, you have much more control of the context. Let's begin from the settings. There's a new experimental feature for Copilot Chat. You can see everything here in the setting key that handles code generation and in particular instruction. And you can find already here an example. You can either feed Copilot with a file or a series of text instruction that will be used in each request that generates code from Copilot Chat. You can already try it by clicking Edit in Setting JSON and here you will already see, for example, how to feed a file or even some plain text instructions. This, for example, adds a generated by Copilot comment on each generated code. And as you notice, this is an array, so nothing really stops you from adding more text or more files in the instructions. Let's try this simple example first. I go on an empty file, I click Command I and define a const with value 5. And just like that, it will read the instruction first and write the constant in uppercase and the generated by Copilot comment. And to prove it works, I can delete this one say that it should be in lowercase, I save, and if I go back asking the exact same prompt, it will still use the comment, but this time it will be in lowercase. This was kind of a simple example, but if you think about it, you can use it for more code preferences, like using async await, the return early pattern, ternary operators, or even security practices or conventions specifically tied to your company. You may have noticed that this is my global settings for VS Code. But if you want settings specifically to a single project, you can create a new file inside the .vs code folder called settings.json. And the settings applied here will, surprisingly, be only effective on this repository. And the syntax is exactly the same. You define here object, you can use your keys, and here I can define a new array. And you see I should also have, yeah, I also have autocomplete. So it works exactly like the global config, but this time it is only specific to this project. But in the introduction, I talked about context. So let me remove these particular configs and let's see what I meant by that. In this new file, let's say I want to delete a project. And Propilot Chat doesn't really know what a project is, how it should delete it. So it will try to generate a kind of generic code. It uses Axios and with a try catch, there's a delete call. But let's try to do something better. So let's try to feed Copilot Chat with the exact same prompt, but this time I want to specify a file. And I will pick another file doing similar operations. This time, if I want to delete a project, it will read the other file, and now it knows that in this project I'm using Superbase, I've got a create client function, and there's a project table having ID as a field. If you try again, you see that when you click the hash character, you have code base, file, and many other options that we'll see later. But before going more in depth, let me continue the overview of the cool features you have. For example, here I got a use debounce function, but it debounces on a value. I want instead to convert the debounce to a function call. So Copilot will try to generate something and will edit in line my code. And this is pretty much what I wanted to create. But let's say I want to add some documentation. From here, I can type slash doc, and this will basically read this function and generate the code I need. It is actually even more verbose than I would like to. And as you can see, this was super long and complete. But now let's try something similar, but instead of creating the documentation, I will use a different comment that you may have already seen, that is test. This is not something new, but it is actually having a kind of new behavior. Instead of just writing the test in the chat, it will actually create a new file with all your tests. And all you have to do now is really hitting command S, give your file a name, like use debounce.test.ts and hit save. This is automatically added in the same folder as your original file. But as you can see, there are quite some errors. This is using jest, but in my project, I'm not using jest. What can I do? Well, the first option could have been use Vitesse in the config we saw earlier, but in this case, we can select everything and say use Vitest instead of jest. And just like that, it will regenerate the code, unsurprisingly, using Vitest instead of jest. And in a couple of seconds, really, it is regenerated the entire code. We can hit accept. And now it seems almost perfect except from this import that isn't getting quite right. And yeah, with this tiny fix, I can try to run npm run test and let's see what happens. Tests are passing with really little effort. To be honest, I should go through all tests and validate that in fact they're correct, but this really seems like a good starting point. Or another option 
is summon the global copilot chat and say, editor, the symbol is basically mentioned in context. Given the entire file in the editor as a context, I can ask to explain. And just like that, it will read this file and explain what it just generated. And it's generated an explanation of what this code is doing. From here, you can indeed continue chatting, but if you want to move it on the sidebar, just click this icon and it will open the exact same chat here on your laptop. But speaking of the global chat, let's try something else. I'm gonna ask where are columns defined for the task table? I don't know, let's see what happens. Well, it will use this file as reference, which obviously is not enough to know where something is defined. But again, I can use context by either using the hash character or by clicking on this icon here and say, I want to use the entire code base as a context. You can find here it is preselected. And again, I will ask the same question. Where are columns defined for the test table? Now it will analyze the entire code base. And just like that, it found that there's a file called task table column in my repository that is exactly where the columns are defined. And also if I click here, yep, that's exactly the file where I've got column definition for my task entity. But we know Copilot is kind of everywhere on VS Code. And it, indeed, it is on the terminal. First of all, you might have Copilot in the CLI. You can summon it with a double question mark and you can ask about generic shell command, GitHub command, or git command. And this is actually a tool that lives by itself. But for free, if you have Copilot Chat already installed, you can use command I, the usual shortcut for Copilot, and this time it is in the terminal. And if I ask the diff with my previous commit, it will generate the command. I can click run to quickly run it. And this is what I get. I change something on this file. And with that, you get a quick proof that Copilot Chat is also in your terminal. But in general, you may want to have an extra look at this sparkle icon you can find in a lot of different places on VS Code, as this is basically an indicator that Copilot is doing something magical if you click it. In this case, it generated the comment message since we added a new test, but you can also find it every time, for example, you get an error, you hover with your mouse, and in the quick fix menu, there's a fix using Copilot, well, this was actually easy, just a string. So keep an extra eye for those sparkles. They might be do something really cool. If we step out of VS Code for a moment, you know that there's a lot of cool applications built on top of Copilot, with the biggest one probably being Copilot Workspace. Doing end-to-end -end work from an issue, getting you all the way through a request. I already published a full demo on my channel, you might want to have a look. By the way, GitHub Universe is next month in San Francisco, and I'm quite sure they will announce some new cool features. If you're also going to the conference, see you there. And that was it about the latest cool Copilot features. I really hope you found this video helpful, and see you in the next one. Bye!